Ionization energy is energy needed or required. It's endothermic to remove one electron from gaseous atom or ion. The word gaseous is very important in your definition. For example, if you look at sodium, make sure you write it as a gas. Remove one electron to produce unipositive ion. And that's your first ionization energy. The value is 496 kilojoules per mole. Now the second ionization energy is we go after the ion and we remove one more electron, the energy gets increased. We talk about the increase later. But, and the third ionization energy is still remove one more electron from two plus and create three plus. And the energy is, has this value for sodium. Two, uh, two devices we can use to uh, measure ionization energy. One is mass spectrometer and the other one is studying emission spectra. And the second one is the one I'm going to look at. If you imagine this is a nucleus of hydrogen and it has the following shells, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and even infinity, although you have one electron. And uh, one thing you should note that as you go away from the nucleus, the shells are converging, they get closer to each other. Now, uh, since we study emission, when electrons fall down, they emit a light of specific color. For example, if the electron is sitting on shell number seven, if it lands on shell number three, it gives you the least energy <coughs> in infrared. And the wavelength is that you can calculate your frequency by knowing that it's speed of light over wavelength. And you can also calculate its energy, which is Planck's constant times its frequency. We're not going to do it for, for infrared, but uh, if the electron is the same electron is sitting on shell number seven comes to n equal two it lands there it's going to give you a discrete color in visible domain and the wavelength gets big uh, smaller than the one in infrared the frequency should go higher and energy should go higher now if the electron is coming to n equal one <coughs> that releases the most energy and that's that will be in UV. That's what, what I'm what I'm interested in to discuss, and that gives you the most energy. So that's just a reminder. Now, in terms of ionization energy and convergence uh, limit, if the electron is sitting in n equal one, which is known as ground state, if this electron be able to go to shell infinity then you have totally lost that electron and that's ionization energy. So if we know how much energy is required for this electron to make its shell equal infinity, that will be your ionization energy. So that's where a hydrogen atom has lost one electron to produce hydrogen positive ion. And we like to calculate that ionization energy. So what information do we need is when we look at emission, when the electron comes to n equal one from shell infinity, we know the wavelength is being released and that's 91.2 nanometers. When it comes from n equal infinity and it lands on n equal one, this is the the wavelength being released. So let's calculate frequency first. Speed of light is wavelength times frequency. Frequency is speed of light divided by wavelength. It's given in your data booklet. It's 3 times 10 to power 8 meters per second. And the wavelength, uh, we know it's 91.2 nanometers. So that's 10 minus 9 meters when it comes from infinity to n equal one. When we do this division, uh, frequency comes to life and it's 3.28 times 10 to power 15 hertz or second minus one. So first piece of information. Now let's just calculate uh, energy of that electron, which is Planck's constant times frequency. Then again, Planck's constant is given to you in the data booklet as 6.6 .6 times 10 to minus 34 joules times seconds multiplied by the frequency which we just calculated. And when we do that, 
the energy of one electron comes to life, which is 2.17 times 10 to minus 18 joules. Now this is per electron. You should realize we like it in joules per uh, mole or kilojoules per mole. So what we are going to do is actually remember that one mole of anything, sp specifically one mole of electron is 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 electrons. So all I need to do is multiply these two quantities by each other times 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. At the end, I will divide them by, by 1,000 to have it in kilojoules, and that will give me 1,310 kilojoules per mole. And that's ionization energy of hydrogen. So if you know uh, the energy that's required that you go from n equal 1 to n equal infinity, that's your ionization energy. In order to calculate that, all you need to know is the wavelength that an electron comes from n equal infinity to n equal 1. And you go through these calculations, you should be able to reproduce it, and that's your first ionization energy for hydrogen.